Okay, so now that we know what a truth function is, let's try to understand how they relate to truth tables. So as we saw previously, truth functions are logical operators or connectives that take in two sentences, or really just their truth values, as inputs and produces a truth value as output. In a previous video, we described the conditions that define the behavior of the truth function and, and we saw that a sentence with and is true just in case both of the individual parts that are connected by and are individually true. So how can we describe this relationship? Well, luckily, since the inputs to the and truth function are just two sentences, and each sentence has to have one of two truth values, there are really only four possible kinds of input values that and has to deal with. True, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. So in other words, we can simply enumerate or list out in a table every possible combination of the truth values of P and Q. That's what we've done here in columns one and two. So we can then show clearly and exactly how the value of P and Q is determined from the value of P and the value of Q. Okay, so let's look at the truth table for P and Q. Here you see a pretty standard simple truth table. First we create a column for each of the individual atomic variables, which in this case are P and Q. Then we have to produce all the different combinations of values of T and F for P and Q. So this isn't so hard. Um, basically what you'll do is fill up half of the first column with T's and the rest with F's. Then fill up a quarter of the second column with T's and then a quarter with F's, then T's, etc. And if we had a third variable like R, you would switch again between T and F, this time at every eighth line. And so the pattern would be basically alternating and um, alternating more frequently the more to the right that you go in the table. And that way you'll get all combinations of P and Q. So we will be able to describe the behavior of the proposition P and Q in all possible configurations. Okay, in practice we won't usually have to deal with any more than two or three variables, otherwise the truth table would get very, very long and unwieldy. So we begin by initializing the columns um, with atomic variables with their corresponding truth value. Then when we're deciding P and Q, we compute, we compute the value for P and Q at each row based on the value of P at that row and the value of Q at that row. So for row one, both P and Q are true, and as we've already observed, that means the conjunction is going to be true if both conjuncts are true as well, so therefore P and Q is true. Okay, in the second row, P is true and Q is false, so only one of them is true. In that case, the conjunction is going to be false, since conjunction requires both conjuncts to be true. If even one of them is false, that suffices to make the conjunction false. So we put F in row two. In row three, P is false and Q is true. So again, only one of the two is true. Therefore, the conjunction uh, is false. So we put F in row three of the final column. And lastly, in row four, we can see that both P and Q are false, so then obviously the conjunction P and Q is going to be false as well. So now we have filled in the entire truth table for AND. And we now have a nice clear visual representation of the fact that P and Q is only true when both of its parts, P and Q, are individually true, and otherwise it's false. So we can see that from the truth table because line one is the only row that's true in the column for P and Q. So each of the logical operators has its own unique truth table. Uh, we won't go over all of them in this video, but it's really important to be able to remember those truth tables and how to use them. And the rules are very simple, and once we start dealing with more complex formulas, we'll still just be applying these same basic rules over and over again. So it's really important to be able to produce these truth tables for the basic logical connectives um, for memory. Okay, let's look at another example just for illustration. So here we have a truth table with a disjunction. So we have to fill in the final column. Okay, so what do we do in the first row? So is P or Q true when both P is true and Q is true? 
Well, yes, if both of the disjuncts are true, then P or Q is going to be true. So we put a T in row one of the third column. Um, okay, so what about if P is true and Q is false? Uh, what if only one of the disjuncts is true and the other one is false? Well, in that case, the disjunction is going to be true because unlike conjunction, if I say P or Q and at least one of the parts is true, then the whole disjunction is true as well. For example, squares are rectangles or eight is prime. That's true even though eight is not prime. So as long as either P or Q is individually true, then the disjunction will be true as well. Similarly, it's only false when both of the parts or the disjuncts are false. And this is captured in row four, where P and Q are both false. As we can see from um, column one, row four, P is false. Column two, row four, Q is false, so therefore P or Q is going to be false. So we've introduced the basic ideas behind a truth table and how it can be used to represent a truth function. And again, you should really make sure to study the rest of the truth functions, or the truth tables for the truth functions in the text. Uh, because having a lot of practice and comfort with these basic operations will make it much easier to do more complex calculations. So let's look at one more example just for practice. Okay, this time we'll analyze a proposition containing two sentential operators. So slightly more complex, but still fairly simple. So here we have P and P or Q. That's what we're trying to prove in the final column. So the important thing to observe here is that we always build up the truth table one operator at a time. And we start working with the less complex sentences, which are the more embedded ones, and we calculate their truth values, and then we can use the values that we've just calculated in deriving the values for the more complex sentences. So every step of the way, we're just applying the same basic rules to at most two columns of truth values, whose values we've already calculated, and once we've calculated the truth values for a given column, then we can basically ignore all of the complexity involved in that column, the proposition for that column, and just look at the truth values that we've calculated. So what that means is that even when you're faced with a really long proposition, like one containing you know, a dozen truth functional operators, you should know that you're just going to be applying the same basic rules over and over, so you shouldn't feel overwhelmed or intimidated. Okay, so let's look at this example. So to get the value of the last column, P and P or Q, we first need to know the value of P or Q, right? Because P and P or Q is a conjunction between P on the one hand and P or Q on the other hand. All right, we already have the values of P, that's kind of predetermined. So we first need to determine the values for P or Q. Okay. Uh, we just went over the truth values or the truth table for disjunction, so we don't really need to dwell on that aspect. Um, so let's just go through that. If P and Q are both true, then P or Q is true. If P is false and Q is P is true and Q is false, then P or Q is still true. If P is false and Q is true, then P or Q is also true. And finally, if P is false and Q is false, then P or Q is false. Okay, so that's the same reasoning that we've just gone over in the previous slide. So now that we've calculated the value for P or Q, we can go ahead and calculate P and P or Q. So how do we do this? Well, we have to apply the rules for the truth table for conjunction, but this time the inputs are P on the one hand and P or Q on the other. So we're going to be looking at the values in columns one and column three. Okay, so in the first row, column one is true and column three is true. So that's true and true. So the conjunction is true because both conjuncts are true in this case. In row two, we have true in column one and true in column three. So that's true and true. So the conjunction again is true. In row three, we have false in column one and true in column three. So that's false and true, so the conjunction is false since the first conjunct is false. Finally, for row four, we have false in column one and false in column three, and they're both false, so in this case, the conjunction is definitely false. 
So the truth table for P and P or Q is true, true, false, false. Okay, so we've worked through a slightly more complex example now. Remember that the key for handling complex propositions is to build up the truth table uh, one operator at a time, one column at a time, and each time there's a new operator to deal with, we calculate its values in the truth table, and then we can refer to our previous calculations as we build uh, up the more complex proposition.